you mentioned the police. And so defunding the police at present is a, is a headline. And so we see Garcetti moving forward with that. At the same time, it seems like the incumbent, Jackie Lacey, is getting funding from the police. And so now, as it relates to her campaign, I think as humans, right? So humans from the outside, the humans that are ingesting everything that the media is putting out, we're going so hard into defunding the police. I'm not convinced that's the answer. I'm convinced some sort of reform surely needs to happen. Some sort of movement of the funds needs to happen. As you think about this, you mentioned some things around mental health. You mentioned some things around how we as humans, the brain isn't necessarily there until about the age of 25, the hippocampus has to develop. What are some things that you think make the most sense? So whether that's maybe getting more lenient with people under a certain age, or whether that's creating more programs as it relates to mental health, focus more on, at the end of the day, the people that go to jail are coming back, right? They're coming back to broken families. Yeah. And so it's like, what are we doing as human? Like, why, where have we gone wrong as a, as a human yeah. race? Not as a race, but as a human race, where it's just, we're just, we're treating these people like they're, they're never coming back to our society. And that's just not the case. And so how do you think about solving that issue? How do we think about the rehab as opposed to the complete, yeah. you know, just yeah. criminalization? So, I mean, several things, by the way, this is an American problem. This is not a, a worldwide problem, right? Like the Europeans mm -hmm. have figured out a lot of this much better than we have, right? Portugal decriminalized drug use 23 years ago, and they've had much better results. Most of the European Union has de facto decriminalized drug use. Of course, they have also national health systems, so it's very, very, it's much easier for them to medicalize a problem than for us, right? Uh, we have so many people that do not have access to to medical or health services. But I think that, first of all, I think defunding the police is a term that means very different things to different people, right? There are some people that say 90% should be defunded. Other people are talking about reform. I, I think that for me, the issue is more of reimagining the whole system. Understanding, first of all, I don't think you can reform a system that is inherently designed to do some things that are not necessarily good for us anymore. They probably never were, but we understand it. So, you know, I, I don't think that you can take a horse buggy and make it into a race car, right? It's just not possible, right? And, and I'm making that because I'm trying to make some comparisons that illustrate, I just don't think, you know, you cannot put a jet engine on a horse buggy, right? You can put wings on a horse buggy, but it's still gonna fall apart when it tries to take off, right? So we have to start from scratch and starting to have an honest conversation. Would we today, I mean, if we were Martians and we came down to earth, would we design our criminal justice system the way that it is today? And I, and I believe the answer would be resoundly no, right? It's not a system that works, it's a system that first of all, the failure rate is horrendous, right? I mean, on a good day, we have a 40% recidivism rate, that means that everything that we touch, about 40% goes wrong. Now, would you be willing to walk into an airport and jump on an airline that the, the, the person checking you and says, by the way, you have a 40% chance that this thing is going to fall off the sky? My I, mean, I, I know it's an absurd question, but you know, we wouldn't, right? But but we do that. We spend billions, and well, we spend trillions of dollars, right? In a criminal justice system that doesn't work, you know, in prisons, you know, we know the things that work. We know that public health work. We know that education works. In fact, you want to know one of the biggest predictor of someone not committing a crime? Give him a high school diploma, put him in college, and give him housing. But yeah, we spend, you know, we send juveniles out of clip or in the state of California almost $300,000 a year to house a juvenile in a custody facility or, or a single adult spending eighty dollars to $100,000 a year and you shake your head and you say, you know, where do we go wrong? Because that's not a national, that's not an international problem. It's an American problem, right? How do you start over? Do you fire everybody? Like, how do you, well, how do you do uh, that? Yeah, obviously, I mean, I, I don't think you can do that, right? So it's got to be, it has to be a gradual thing, but it has to be a gradual thing with a very clear understanding that the objective is not to continue to polish the, the corners, if you will, it's to really reimagine the system, right? So there are certain things that you can take out of the policing immediately. Okay, that 30% or so of calls that are mental health related 
create, take that money away from the police department, put that money into public health and create a network of first responders that do not look like a cop and that are medically trained to respond to that. Now that might take you in some counties, you may be able to do that in six months or a year. Some counties it might take you two or three years, but you start taking that money away. You get district attorneys that start not incarcerating people for pre-trial low-level offenses or non-serious, non-violent offenses. You know, about 50% of the people in any county jail are there for pre-trial reasons. They haven't been deemed to be guilty yet, but they're there because they're poor, they cannot afford to pay bail, right? So mm -hmm. get rid of money bail, get rid of that 40 or 50%, put them out on the street, let them come to the day in court, whatever the day in court looks like, that will have a tremendous impact on jail population. That will also have a tremendous impact on whether we need to have more jails. We could actually reduce that, right? We try and we prosecute a lot of cases that don't need prosecution. You know, we should not be prosecuting people because they have a drug addiction and they have a mental health problem, right? So divert those people away from the system immediately. So if you start very methodically, but very clearly and very sure-footed about where you're going, you start the process of what I used to call, actually, it's funny because somebody called me that they said, well, you've been talking about reducing the footprint of the system for years. Isn't that defunding? And I said, well, yeah, it's another way of calling about defunding, right? I've been talking about let's reduce the footprint of the system. There is a minimal number of things that require a batch in the gun. And what we need to do is slowly get us out there, but we got to do it. We cannot keep talking about it. And what I'm fearful is, that we keep talking about, we'll, we'll create more training, more diversity, none of that stuff is gonna work. And the perfect example, you know, you cited it very well, Nick, when you talk about you know, three rookie officers just out of the academy with a senior guy, they all clearly went through the most recent training, arguably the escalation, all that stuff. They stood by and did nothing. You know why? Because the culture and the structure of the system is what it is. Hey everyone. Thanks for checking out that clip. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in hearing the full episode, it's out right now on our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great guests come on this show before, and we've got a lot of great guests coming up in the future. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And one final note, we're always looking for new ideas and new companies to feature on the show. So if you know of someone or know of a company, write us a comment down below letting us know who they are and what they do. We'd be happy to have them on the show. Till then, I'll just be here waiting for your comments. So, uh, see you later.